Welcome to the Empower Hour. My name is Al Kumar and this is Hanifa. Hi. <laughs> we are your hosts for the Empower Hour, where we take one hour of your day and we come to you with impactful uh, topics of discussion to hash out. And this is um um, and we do that each and every Wednesday from 2 to 3 p.m. We apologize for all you guys out there in eLife Media Land. We had a few, a little technical difficulties. We get, got started a little tardy today, but we're going to jump right in. Um, we're going to share with you where we are. We are in the eLife Media Studio, located right here inside of Everlasting Life Restaurant and Lounge, 9185 Central Avenue, and that's in Capitol Heights, Maryland. Um, your Prince George's section of Maryland. Um, the eLife Studio is open for um, for viewers as well as for hosts. So if you would like to come and host your own show, if you like what Hanif and I do here, or you have some other information that you think is um, deemed important <clears throat> that the um, that the general public needs to hear. Come on in and talk to us over here at eLife Media about uh, signing up for your own program. So what we're going to do is we're going to hop right into this discussion and then we're going to loop back around midway into the program and talk to you more about some of our exciting, exciting events we have coming up, up today. Hanifa. Welcome on. <laughs> welcome, welcome. <laughs> How you feeling? I'm okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, what you wanted to mention about? Um, oh, yeah. Something? Um, so, as you guys know, the Caribbean is really feeling it right now. Uh, we've been hit by two hurricanes: Hurricane Irma about yeah. two weeks ago, yeah. and now just yesterday we were hit again by Hurricane Maria. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and so, right now, Puerto Rico, as we speak, is actually experiencing Hurricane Maria. Mm -hmm. um, and so I just kind of wanted to share with the people that are in the DMV area, we've had an op operation rebuild the Virgin Islands, already had a drive maybe about two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. So they're having another drive that's coming up on September 24th, this Sunday, from 1 p.m. to 6 p.m. It's going to take place at the Fletcher's Field, which is at 5200 Kenilworth Avenue in Riverdale, Maryland. Um, they'll have a fish fry and some fun things for the kids as well. And so we're just asking you to come up, come out. Don't come on empty-handed. Um, the fish fry, it's free. Mm -hmm. um, the activities, the face painting and so forth is free. So come with donations. Um, come with non-perishable things uh, so that we can gather those and be able to help the people um, in the Caribbean, in the uh, Virgin Islands specifically. Yeah. Um, because uh, from... Woo, a double one. I know. When, when Irma hit... Um, they evacuated some of the people from St. Thomas to places like Puerto Rico and St. Croix. Right. Who now, Puerto now Rico's they're experiencing exact, both St. Croix. St. Croix just got hit directly. Wow. And St. Croix is a part of the Virgin Islands as well. So that was another island helping St. Thomas out. So now they, the people that have been evacuated, they are now being experiencing another Woo. hurricane. Yeah. Where are they so going? There's a lot going on. Um, I'm not sure where they're going to take them now because the evacuation from St. Thomas went to St. Croix and Puerto Rico. Right. So I'm not sure what the next steps are. Wow. But the people who are not um, on the islands are doing what they can because it's enough of us to build us back. Yeah. Um, and, you know, we're, we're strong. Yeah. And so, yeah, we're just sort of... And resilient. And mm -hmm. so we're just kind of keeping the faith and, you know, a lot of anxiety, definitely, yeah. for those of us that still sure. have family um, on the island. So just taking it one day at a time. So, again, if you can come out on Sunday, September 24th, Operation Rebuild the Virgin Islands, uh, 1 p.m. to 6 p.m. at Fletcher's Field, which is 5200 uh, Kenilworth Avenue in Riverdale, Maryland. Non-perishable things, items, just... Come on out and donate. Where can people go if they aren't, heaven forbid, can't come out? Where can they donate, like, online? There's, there's one organization that has um, a GoFundMe. It's called Virgin Islands United. Mm -hmm. um, they can go on there, and if they, they want to make a monetary donation, they can do so. Right. Yes. And you recommend this yes. organization? Yes. Yes, I do. I do recommend this organization. And they also they should actually be a part of the Operation Rebuild um, on Sunday as well. Good. Mm -hmm. Great. Great. Yeah. Okay. All right, family. Yes. Let's support one another. Okay, the topic of this discussion is why buy black? What's in it for me? So we're gonna hop right in and talk about that. So um, Hanifa, just out of, just to ask you, you know, I always swing the questions to you. Yeah. <laughs> 
Why, why black? Somebody asked you that question. Why buy black? What, what's in it for me? Why should I do that? And they were black themselves. What would be your reply? I mean, my, well, initially I would probably, I would probably say, why not? Okay. You know, because it's it's um, obvious why. Hmm. You know, um, for the uh, e economic upliftment of our people and maintenance of our people. Right. You know, we look around us and our other communities support each other mm -hmm. economically all day, every day. And not only that, when you look at the numbers and how the dollar circulates in the black community, it's it's not even a full 24 hours. It's not even a day. Right. But in other communities, it's, it's circulating for like almost a month you know, 17 days, 19 days, but in our community it's not. And it does have a direct impact on us as far as our wellness, our health, our education, all of that mm. is impacted by our economic state. So yes. when you say circulating, for those who may not even understand what that means, mm -hmm. when you say the dollar circulates um, one time in a black community and it circulates, I believe it's 19 times, in a Jewish community. Well, it circulates in the black community. Well, it goes out of the black community, I'm sorry, um, within six hours. Okay. Right? right? Whereby you might have, like, let's say the Chinese. Theirs is like, it stays in the community for at least 28 days. Okay. You what do you mean by difference? that? Because, okay, so when I say that it's the community banks, right, they're supporting the community banks, um, the professional, the businesses there. So they're spending their money amongst each other, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. And it's taken 28 days before it actually leaves out of the community. So you mean so you mean to tell me like if somebody got paid mm -hmm. and had, now they got $100 to spend. <laughs> right. Yay, I got paid and you know, I got this money, I'm gonna do whatever with it. Well, before you even get paid, a lot of us have direct deposit. Where's wow. our money going? So that's an automatic, right? So now, wow. Right. <laughs> okay, right. so let's say you don't have direct <laughs> deposit right. and you have $100 in your hand mm -hmm. to spend and you're a black person and you live in Southeast Washington, D.C. and you decide, I'm going to spend this $100. And the first thing you decide is, I'm hungry. And then you'll go and maybe to the Chinese restaurant. Because mm -hmm. it's maybe, convenient. Maybe to the Italian restaurant mm -hmm. or what have you. And you spend a portion of that. So let's say $25 on your meal. Boom, that's gone. Out of the community forever. Okay, well, now that I want to um, do some entertainment for myself. Mm -hmm. So, well, you know, maybe I'll buy me a ticket to the ball game or something. <laughs> <laughs> well, who owns the stadium? Go out to a lounge. Go friends. out to the lounge I mean, right. with friends. Mm -hmm. Restaurant. Yeah. Go, go to the movies mm -hmm. or what have you. So my point is, without, you know, going too long on it, that That's what circulation the means. circulation right. means that we take our money, or I need an outfit or a pair of mm -hmm. shoes, and we go to the malls and, you know, these places that are not owned and operated by black people. And right. we spend all our money outside of our own community. And what that does is it decimated, de decimates our own community. Then we look around and say, oh, the projects is ran down, and people da 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 da. Well, you have to keep in mind, if we are the most poverty-stricken people in this country mm -hmm. because we don't invest back in ourselves with our dollars, our communities, then yeah, well, naturally so. That's the natural progression of what happens when we don't invest back in our communities. Mm -hmm. They we, become dilapidated. Right. And it's interesting because um, talking about buying black, um, this message is timely as well because we're talking about even my people the Caribbean people, the Virgin Islands, trying to rebuild. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that we have home is support your own. You know, and because you often see where people are not supporting locals, and that's the circulation we're talking about within our community. Yeah. You know, where when I get my money, when I get paid, I spend to go get something to eat at Dr. Baruch's store. Right. Right? I need um, lotion or oil. I come to uh, a genie. Right? Yes. That's, that's, you know, for, for your needs. Six hours alone before the money leaves our community, that's not even a full work day. Right. It's not even a full work day. Six hours? Right. <laughs> right. So imagine, so, so what happens is if we, if we then invest in each other, we help build those infrastructures. Absolutely. So now let's say, for instance, my, just take my small business, for example. I have a booth right here inside of Everlasting Life because the owner was so graciously to allow me to come and do that. Um, so I don't have any overhead, but it's just me. But let's say, for instance, 
500 more people a month decided that, you know, well, I'm going to start buying all my jewelry from Malik's Fashion. And this is not a plug, by the way. I promise it's not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to spend all my money with, I mean, when I buy jewelry, it's going to be straight from Malik's Fashion. And say 500 more people to get that. Now I'm getting 500 more customers per month. What does that do to my small business? I can't, whoa, now, now I have to grow. I have to expand. So I can't do this by myself. So I have to hire more people. You know, I have to, you know, so and here's hunt, hence the hiring on of more people. So, so the unemployment rate in exactly. our community mm -hmm. that is now, what, 25%, all that lowers. And not just me. So cause think about that with all the black-owned businesses. If we were all just decided to support them more, they would have to expand and grow and pull other people in. And the vast majority of any institution, any business institution, when they start hiring, they hire their own first and Absolutely. foremost. As they should. You know, I don't, I'm one that I don't get all up in arms about when people hear, oh, you know, they just hiring white people, then white people. That, what they supposed to look out for themselves, just as we supposed to look out for ourselves. So I think we got it twisted. We think that everybody else supposed to look out for us, you know, and, and, and it don't work that way. We can't talk about um, supporting black businesses or empowerment, the empowerment of black people, mm -hmm. you know, without the economic empowerment of black people without supporting black businesses. Right. They both go together. Right. Hand you know, in they, hand. They, go, they both go hand in hand. So it's so, like being yeah. crippled. Mm -hmm. So it's like being crippled trying to fight in a, a, a fight in, a, in, in which are one hand behind your back. And we have to know what that means. It, it, it means that, you know, it improves um, wellness, uh, health, social mobility, education. We right. talk about, you know, dilapidated schools. You know, if we keep that money in our community, we can start to, like, you know, rebuild those things and fix those things. And create our own. And create our, ex and create our own as a community. Right. That's, that's, like, the most important reason, I think. Uh, for supporting black businesses is keeping that money in the community so yeah. that we can build the community and empower each other. I agree. Yeah. And we're going to pull Dr. Baruch into the conversation because, you know, he's a, he's a guru. He's a guru <laughs> when it comes to business. He has uh, three successful um, businesses and a whole lot more. If, I, if we ran out of gamut of what this man all does, all the, all the hands that he, his hands, all the pots his hands are in, we will run out of the time, but um, I'm going to pull him in so he could share with us some information on this um, top topic of discussion. Oh shoot, Doc! I'm trying great, to get great, all great, in great. There uh, it's right. um, I, I think it's. Let's okay. see whether that works. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Is that in the way of the camera? We're working it out as we go. Oh, that's in the way of that camera, so you're going to want to move that back a little bit. Yeah. Okay. yeah. All right, great. So, um, yeah, economic empowerment is a big issue. It's a, it's a sustaining issue. And I, I have some statistics that I think are relevant to this conversation. You all remember back in 2008 when black folk was like riding high and all of a sudden somebody pulled the carpet out from up under us. Well, prior to 2008, the black median wealth was $19,000 uh, in 2007. And after that whole crash that we experienced, which I, I call one of the worst forms of, of racism and the activation of racism against people of color was the, the prime, prime uh, interest rate and that, that loan scandal that everybody was in where they were like, well, I don't have a job, but I can get a, a car and a house and, you know, and a, a, a membership at the country club and all of that, and it's a million dollar loan, and I don't have any income, yep, you can have that, sir. We're gonna give that to you. Mm -hmm. We watched more money leave out of our community during that year, 2008, probably, than we will ever see again. Yeah. And um, the, the, the numbers now are, we're down to $11,000 is what we, on average, have as, um, as far as our wealth. Wow. That's wealth in our community. Eleven thousand dollars is what we got that we can access. Uh oh, we got a situation. Let's let's mortgage eleven thousand dollars out of the house so that we can deal with this situation. I'm not talking about what's in the bank account. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about your total wealth. So what's in the bank account? What's under the mattress? What's in your mortgage totals on average for people of color? Eleven thousand dollars. Wow, that's 
scary. Yeah, it's really bad. And, and what you all were talking about with regard to business and supporting our businesses, I think, yeah, I, I think we do need to do more supporting of our businesses, but I think our businesses have to have a responsibility to us as well. Oh, that was one of my questions. And uh, it isn't enough to just support a business that has a black face behind right. it. It has to be a business that benefits the black community. I agree. And when you support that, commu that business, then likewise, the money circulates, but also the benefits go beyond just financial. You know, they, they go beyond that. You know, there's, there's an energetic expression that, you know, I see people uh, have when they talk about, you know, when I, when I see them ask the question, is this, is this a black-owned business? And we're able to say yes. And you can see that there's an emotional, there's a psychological, mm -hmm. spiritual, intellectual. It's a whole lot of stuff going on at Sense that moment. Pride. Sure. Mm -hmm. And all of that translates into I feel better about myself. I'm now going to make better decisions on behalf of myself. Mm -hmm. And that includes what we need to do with regard to our capital, what we need to do with regard to our money. Right. I guess um, he mentioned you. You mentioned um, the black businesses have mm -hmm. a responsibility to those who spend their money with them as well. Because I can't imagine um, you are seeking out black businesses to support them, but their money is also going out of the community. You know what I mean? What the black business? Black businesses. Good black point. Business. Exactly. Good point. Mm -hmm. You know. So yep. that's a, that, you're right. They do have a responsibility. So right. it goes deeper than just a black face to the business. Right. right. You know? And and that's important that you bring that up because you do want to qualify, and you know just just so that you all in in the local area understand the position that we've taken. Mm -hmm. If you look at my lawyer, my accountant, my plumber, my electrician, you know, you Your can go banker. down the list, my banker, right, I, I bank with Industrial Bank, you go down the list, you see that at least one more time that money stays in that. What they do with it, I don't know whether they go out to their, you know, suppliers and their suppliers <laughs> don't look like it, but I know what we're doing on our end. Mm -hmm. we, are, we are doing that work on our end to do what we can to empower more of our people. You know, so that, uh, you know, we can make a difference in the community. Otherwise, what is this for? You know, what are we doing this for? Right. Yeah. Right. And, and, and supporting black businesses, um, if we can touch on this a little bit, it, uh, not because it has a black face on, on, the, on the brand, uh, means that it's a black business. For right. example, L'Oreal. Right, mm -hmm. there's a there's a section in the in the in the in Walmart maybe. So you have the ethnic section, you have this is the Spanish section, you know, and then you get to the ethnic section, and it's, it's usually around hair products or quote unquote beauty products, and there's a black face, and we're like, oh, we're supporting a black business, and L'Oreal, mm -hmm. L'Oreal is not, it, it has no black suppliers, it just has black buyers, right. period, mm -hmm. right, and we have to understand that as well, not right. because there's a black face on the brand. That's just to expand to a broader audience and to get our money, right? Mm -hmm. You know, that's all that is. So yeah. just keeping, you know, bearing that in mind. Yeah. Hennessy is the next another one. Oh, Hennessy. Yeah. Hennessy makes more money. Funny you mention that because I, I read um, um, my Black Year, <clears throat> our Black Year by uh, Maggie. Maggie, I forget her last name. With the husband and wife. Yes, mm -hmm. husband and wife couple. What they did, they traveled around. Um, well, they traveled around. Um, the nation promoting what or their research that they did but for a whole year they decided that they were going to just buy black strictly black mm -hmm. all year long mm -hmm. and uh, she she documented the whole process and she wrote a book about it mm -hmm. but she mentioned Hennessy did you know that Hennessy um, I think 75% of their profits come from black people but they don't hire no black people for their warehouses and right. things like that they, they you know the percentage of black people they have on their roster as hirees are zero or close to none mm -hmm. so though that's another example of what we do we spend all our money on with these institutions that don't give back to right. us at all, at all. by mm -hmm. no way shape or form right. right it's an interesting dynamic and then we we are we remain Poverty stricken. Right. That's what that's the what I want to put emphasis on because I don't think we completely understand that we we allow ourselves to remain in this poverty stricken state overall. Some people out there who are individualism with 
Individualistic. Mm -hmm. may say, well, I'm good. Mm -hmm. You know, well, I, you know, I make six figures. I don't know right. about y'all and right. the poverty. Well, that's an individual state of mind. You, you know, that's a European construct right. when you start thinking and talking mm -hmm. like that, mm -hmm. because we're yeah. village people, yes. community oriented, and no one person can rise above the condition of their people. Right. So, you know, you, you know, so I'm talking overall, our people overall in general in this country, we remain in the poverty state. We don't have to be right. because we choose to take our money and spend it with other people outside of our own communities. Uh, you know, we don't have to do, you know, like this automatic shut off and shut on. You know, if, if it, it was documented by the uh, Kellogg School of Management at Northwestern University that if, if just a million people, and, and this is, you know, again, these, are, these aren't exact numbers, but between a, a million, half million, a million jobs could be created if higher income black households spent only $1 <laughs> wow. for every $10 that they spend with other ent entities. Wow. Yes. So, so we're, not, we're not saying, you know, just stop going every place else that you go because, you know, people will have a reason why not. They'll right. say, well, right. I can't get everything done, and, right. and yours isn't as good as theirs, right. or whatever they, whatever they choose. But if you just spent $1, that's a half million to a million jobs yeah. that could be created in our community, you know, especially if you got, uh, again, businesses are of a mindset to recirculate uh, those resources. I, I, I would like to add to the conversation something. I don't think we understand the value of what is around us. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and, and the value starts probably with time. Our time management is awful. And what we do with our time demonstrates that we don't have an understanding of the capital associated with time. There's time associated, there's capital associated with time. So if I spend my time doing something that does not benefit me, then at the end of that time, I will not have moved myself forward. Meanwhile, others mm, are moving themselves right. forward. And so the amount of time that our people spend, you know, and statistics, I, I've had marketing people come to me and they say, you know, black people are on Twitter like, you know, crazy. And Instagram, and Instagram is... Instagram, number one. Right. Oh, yeah? So, yeah. so if we're spending our time there not moving forward, now sometimes, of course, we are there and we're engaging in whatever the commerce or mm -hmm. other intellectual or, or, or uh, collective effort benefit that we might be engaged in but too often times and that's the why the, that's the reason why those platforms are set up the way they are that we jump on and something gets our attention and then we go down a rabbit hole and before you know it we look up and it's like wow it's an hour gone by <laughs> and I came true. here just to that send my true. girlfriend a happy birthday <laughs> it's two hours later and it's two hours later now I learned everything that is going on that somebody wants me to know that's going on and they know how to get <laughs> you because they know how to me. link it <laughs> <laughs> you know how to link everything. Yep. Right. Yep. So, so time capital mm -hmm. is something that we're wasting yeah. every single day. Mm -hmm. and, and there's something else that we need to look at. We need to look at relationship capital. There's yes, capital sir. associated with relationships Absolutely. that we don't identify, we Good don't teaching. connect with, yes, right. we don't pursue, Sometimes we don't bring to the table. Sometimes valuable than money. Right. The relationships you build mm -hmm. yes. can yes. be more valuable than money. We have to change our thinking with regard to children. Unfortunately, many of us now see children as a burden. Children mm. are a blessing, and mm. they are money. Children yes. are money. Yes. I remember yes. when I was like mm. eight years old, seven years old, and my father went outside and said, let me show you how to start this lawnmower. Because mm. we ain't paying Slim no more to cut the grass. Mm. <laughs> we, let me show you. So you start doing that over and over and over again in a community, and you realize that, wow, well, that's $100 a month mm -hmm. that my family saved. Mm. So that's $1,200 a year. Jeez. That's a rent or a mortgage payment. You know, mm. now you start saying, okay, that's not just that, but we're going to have you vacuum. We're going to have you do this, that, and the other. And all of a sudden now, children are given responsibilities that now people in 2017 are paying for. Mm -hmm. right. They built industry. They're landscaping business that are out there. Back in my day, I was the landscaper. Not to mention the skill set you, you, you build. Yeah. That's right. By, yeah. you know, starting them young and doing, all, you know, all type of things around the house and things, yard really work, field work. Entrepreneur, um, entrepreneurship mindset. Like, Not you know, right. Yeah. Fixing cars, when, when, whatever. Yeah. Now they got a skill set moving That's right. forward. When you mentioned um, that I remember going to a, um, a Ugandan wedding and uh, um, the guy who was the ambassador at the time, uh, he mentioned it was his daughter being married and he said we don't have all of these systems <clears throat> set up in place like America mm. you know so yeah. our children are our investments mm. you know we pour into them so that they can pour into oh, us right you know that that is our investment right you know, this is why you see a lot of people from the continent 
they take education so okay. seriously. Mm. And they tell their kids, this is what, I, which I, I don't completely agree with that, but I get it. You know, they t this is what you're going to become because they find those fields that they think make the most money. Yeah. And they say, this is what you're going to do. You right. know what I mean? Right. Because for them, it's like, this is an investment. They right. will sacrifice. Right. You know, work three jobs. Right. For that investment, which is that child. Yeah. And you then look at I mean? the return on that investment, Absolutely. too. Because, Absolutely. Because, you know, we none of us live forever. And mm -hmm. when we get of old age, we need support to help provide and take care of us and as African people, village people, you know, we don't we don't put our old folks in homes. Mm -hmm. That's something we learned along the way mm -hmm. from right. another people's uh, culture. culture. But right. you know, and but all that comes back. So when you need support and in your old, you know, golden years, now that investment's paying off because now you have children to come back and, and sow back into mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. So it's a repetitive can we, cycle. Can we talk about it in a historical context? What's you that? know, just as as far as like where we were supporting each other businesses, because I know like before 1960, you yeah. know, uh, in, in integration or mm -hmm. the illusion of integration, mm -hmm. um, we were supporting each other because we didn't have a choice. We couldn't right. go to the white, you know, the white person's shop up the road to buy from it. We That's had right. no choice but to start. But I think integration changed a lot. But I also think the psychological effect of segregation, meaning uh, we're segregated from you because we're better, right? And mm -hmm. you're inferior to us, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think it did something. We internalized it. Mm -hmm. So at the minute we were integrated, our first thing now is to try to be a part of what the institutions that you know because it's like okay now this this means that I'm someone because I'm buying from the this mm -hmm. person shop up the road. So I think that whole white man's ice is colder. is colder. Integration changed a lot mm -hmm. for the black community you know psychologically yes yes I think it's I the, uh, and, and for me when we're talking about supporting black businesses I think I spoke to you one time about this and I was saying oftentimes you're just shopping if you're used to shopping at Walmart it's habit right it became it becomes habit that's your community that's a community you're, you're in and so it's convenient you're used mm -hmm. to go there I think once your consciousness changes though mm -hmm. you're deliberate yeah. you're more deliberate about how and where you spend your money that's so I think it's a doubt. shift in consciousness as, as well for our people, it's, it's, it's very easy to say you just need to support black businesses, right. but they don't really have the mindset. I'm really uh, able to connect the dot as to what that means. Right. You know what I mean? How does that impact, how does that affect my life? Okay, so what? If I buy a pair of <coughs> sheets from Walmart, you know? That's why <laughs> I wanted to do yeah. this program mm -hmm. so um, so bad because um, the ch mind state shift. If we if we never understand yeah. it on the on the base level as mm -hmm. to why we should do these things, mm -hmm. then we can expect people to shift their mind state mm -hmm. because they don't have the information. They don't have the information to even to even attempt to do that. Mm -hmm. So, like for me, my my personal story when I you know when my I came into a greater consciousness of as of who I was. Mm -hmm. And of course, naturally, I wanted to, you know what I'm saying, invest in myself. Mm -hmm. And so I started to buy, but I started small. You know, I said, okay, from now on, uh, what I say, all my soap, all my soap, I'm not going to the major <laughs> chain stores no more to buy no soap. I'm going to get it from my brothers and sisters. Right. And you know how the universe works. Mm -hmm. Once you put it out there, mm -hmm. and once you say something, it, 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 and that was, a what, about Five years ago, I have yet to buy ever buy another bar of soap from another institution outside of black owned. And it's because, you know, when I put it out there, the universe brings to you those people. If I'm on my last bar of soap, boom, here's somebody walking up the street or something with soap for sale or, you know, anything like that. So I say start small. You don't have to say, okay, all my money is going into into um back to the black company. I think that's unrealistic for most no, people. Yes. But if we just start small and take little small steps, then and if everybody decided to do that, then we, we would be, we would grow more powerful faster. Which is what Dr. Baruch was saying. One dollar to every ten, right? Right. The, something like right. That. Yeah. Yeah. Starting yeah. small. Mm -hmm. And right now it's really not uh, too many excuses out there because you can be on a farm somewhere in Wyoming and still buy black, because you can go right online. There's, it's, there's webuyblack.com. Mm -hmm. There's banking institutions that you can bank with online that's black-owned. There's, there's apps you can 
download to your phone That's now. That can tell you black owned businesses in your community. Good point. Yeah. Right. So if we make an effort to do it, you know, the, the, the resources are out there. We just don't seek or go in search of them because of habit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think we, we also have to recognize that not only segregation, but the Industrial Revolution. Yes. So when we went off the farm, where we had land, where we had power, where we had the capacity to produce our own, to, to sustain and support life within our body, well, we went away from that and decided to come to the city and um, buy from grocery stores that were managed, owned by people that didn't look like us and didn't necessarily have our best interest at heart. It shifted a lot of our wealth. That was a big, major wealth shift from now I'm going to support my own, you know, myself. I'm going to support myself by growing my food out of my own backyard and, and in my, in my, on my farm. Right. When we shifted away from that, one, two things happened. One, our money started going outside of the community more aggressively. And two, I go back to what we were just talking about. All of a sudden, there was no need for children. Okay, because when we, when we would have children, we would, they would work the farm. All right, you, you know, do whatever, all the different farm chores that were out there. So our children would do that. Now children were just sitting around the house looking at television. It's like, look, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, you need to do something. And uh, that shift from being entrepreneurs to being employees also affected our, our wealth and our community. So it's, uh, that, you know, when I talk about capital earlier, I was talking about the, the capital. There's, there's, there's natural capital that we have access to that we're not taking advantage of. And that natural resource capital might be anything from the, the stream in our backyard to the, the fact that we do have land and we could be growing food on it. You know, it's, uh, it's the sunlight, it's the wind, it's the, you know, geothermal energy. And for those of us who've gotten into alternative energy, you know what I'm talking about. But all of these different uh, resources are here and they're free. Mm -hmm. But because we're not being educated about them, we don't know how to access them. The sun is out there every single day, <laughs> and it has enough power coming from that sun to run the entire earth, mm -hmm. and we don't do a daggone thing with it other than try to stay out of it because we don't want to get darker, yes. mm -hmm. which is crazy. <laughs> mm -hmm. you, know, there's, there's, you know, from the agricultural capital, the, 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 you have the bartering and the collaborating. You know, you grow the cabbage, I'm going to grow the kale, yes. you know, and I like kale, you like you kale. Like so yeah, we can, so we can, we can, we can, we, yeah. we're not doing we can any swap of that. And, yeah. and make a profit yes. off the rest, right. yes. you know, so we swap, so our food is good and, and we sell the rest, yeah. you yeah. know, and so man, we making the income off it. So the land is so valuable, right. it's so valuable. And the relationships, again, it goes back to, remember back in the day when you could knock on somebody's door and say, hey, can I get a cup of sugar yes. I do remember. or a cup of yes. rice, I do remember. you know, or look, I'm going out tonight, can you watch my children? Yeah. You know, those things are gone because yeah. our relationships have been decimated. Mm -hmm. you know? A lot of times we don't even know our neighbors. We oh, don't no. even know no. our neighbor's name. No, no you don't want to know no. because you don't want them to know who you are because <laughs> of the dirt that you might be or they might be, you know, associated with. And you just don't, uh, I would rather not know. Well, and, and, and the thing is that um, most of our people who are educated, who can pour the money back into our communities, they are they're not concerned about neighbors. They're concerned about neighborhoods. Right. You know, it's all about where I live. You know, just yeah. to right. say, I live in this area. Right. You know, so that makes me someone. You Prestige. Know? Yeah, yeah. And I've, mm -hmm. I've been I'm, I've been rethinking a lot of things. And, and even with all of this devastation that's happening from Texas to mm. Florida to Mexico now. I mean, all over the place. I'm just like, we really, really, we really need to rethink how we how we see life right you know and the things that we attach value to mm -hmm. because today they can be here and tomorrow they're gone That's it. but if you invest in loving on people and connecting with people you know if your if your focus become life that's right. You know, it's it's no longer about yeah. I'm gonna go to this neighborhood, and you're not putting anything back into the community. I actually think you. What do you guys call them? The the what the bourgeois what? the bourgeoisie the bourgeoisie <laughs> <laughs> the bourgeoisie of our community. They can be damaging, actually. Yeah, absolutely. It, it's it's crazy because you see it all the time, and yeah. so you send your kids off to these institutions to be educated. I mean, for goodness sake, uh, the island I'm from, 32 square miles, most of them leave and they never come back. Mm. And a part of it is because they are 
I, I would say one part of it is there are no jobs that are paying, mm -hmm. right? So mm -hmm. for them in their mind, what am I coming back to? Mm. Because if I'm going to come back and make $20,000 down there, and I'm not saying that's what they make with a college degree, and I can make seventy five up here, you do the math. That's, that's an easy, going. exactly. Yeah. So a lot of them are not coming back. But I also think a part of it is when we're educating our kids, we need to educate our kids on how to create their own jobs. And I think that's missing as well. Yes. So when you go to college, you take what you know, what you learn, Right. And you bring it back to the community. That's right. You know That's what I mean? Right. And so you often you see you're seeing that a lot where people are leaving out of their communities yeah. and they're not going back and they're not putting back into the community. They're actually taking the money that the education has afforded them right. and pouring it into other communities. That's the right. whole premise behind the whole class warfare. Yes. And what we do is we've been we we've been conditioned to look down on our people. Yes. So we get a <laughs> certain stature in life. Yes. And then everybody and we could be come from the hood. Yes. I've seen it happen so many times. People from the hood live and grew up right oh, there in the hood, the and you get to uh, get your, you know, a certain stature yeah. in life, and now you turn around and you look down on those same people where you once were, you know. And I, you know, it, it's the whole mental conditioning because we lack, we lack identity in this and society. So we, we latch onto anything that we feel is divine, uh, defines us or puts us in a line to where anything as close to the dominant society. You know, this right. is what success looks like. Because someone told us this is what success looks like. Yeah. And so it's damaging to our own people because yeah. we're not we're not pouring the money back in. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting. Yeah. So um how do we build industries? It's one thing to have businesses and small businesses and, you know, um, mom and pop shops and things of that nature, but how do we begin building industries? Mm -hmm. You think, Doc? Well, I think the the one thing we have to have control over the natural resource, and we've lost that. We mm. used to have control over natural resources, oh. at least the land resources. We have we have access to, as I shared earlier, we have access to wind, you know, sun, mm -hmm. and geothermal, and and that. But but we need access to uh, the natural resources where we can grow our own. You know, much of what we engage in the uh, on this planet, much of our engagement is, in fact, with the planet itself. You know, a large percentage of that is with the planet. When you think about how much we eat off of the planet, and you know how much we re how much we're getting out of the planet with regard to minerals and and other uh, elements that we're getting out of this plant off of this planet is a large percentage of our interaction that's actually with the planet itself. And we, as a people, we don't, look, we don't even want to touch some dirt. We don't want to have anything to <laughs> do. Look, I'm, I'll, nature, go to, yeah. I'll go to Walmart and buy it. Mm -hmm. I don't want to have anything to do with going down and going back and being country, you know, because <laughs> yeah. we, we think that's, that's a step true. in a negative direction. So we, so we have to control the natural resources, and then we have to understand that our collective effort is what's going to give us the advantage. Mm -hmm. We have to come together, you know. Mm -hmm. We have to, okay, like we were talking about with regard to growing, but in the in the business space, okay, you produce the, the beverages for all the businesses in, in the community, and, and you produce all of the whatever, you know, the, the cold foods, and I'll produce the hot foods, and, and you know, we're going to get somebody else who's going to do the collective marketing so mm -hmm. that we can grow one another and spread the resources you know, uh, spread the requirement. So there's going to be a demand on resources, yes, but it'll be spread across all of our customer base as opposed to us as individuals trying to figure out how we're going to make this work. And it makes a tremendous difference when you got to come up with a million dollars and you've got a million people. That ain't nothing but a dollar. Hmm. You know, when you got to come up with a million dollars and it's five of you in the room, you're scratching your head trying to, okay, who's got what? You know, yeah. and it becomes very challenging. But that, again, goes back to our building our, our communities. And I, and I want to talk about that for a minute because I think we, when you talk about where do we start, building community, oh, boy, it's, uh, we see it in the Latino community and we laugh at them. We yeah. laugh Teach. at them. Oh, look yes. at y'all. Y'all in there. And I, I, Eight I, in I, one house. Ha, ha, ha. I had a condominium. And uh, we, we didn't have to pay water and electric and gas and all the rest of that. And they were right next to me in their condominium. It was two of us in my condo. And I swear it was 13, if not more, in their condo. And then they had a daycare during the day. Mm. So it was all of them living there at night. Then they had the daycare during the day. They were maximizing what they could out of that space. Making a sacrifice. And, of course, eventually the condo went out of business. The condominium complex went out of business because all these you know, folks were moving in and taking advantage of the fact that they don't have to pay bills for you know, their utilities. 
But uh, I think we we have to take a look at communal living. Even yes. if communal living is just on a on a small scale, we don't have to do it. And and I'll give you my personal example. I bought a house in Temple Hills, and I, I was in a community, and there were seventeen of us living in that house. Mm-hmm. Seventeen. My neighbor was pissed. <laughs> and one day he came and he talked to me. We had it was seventeen of us in two cars. Mm-hmm. Wow. You know, seventeen people are supposed to have a car each, <laughs> so that's like fifteen cars that didn't have to get purchased. Uh-huh. It was one electric bill, one gas bill, Imagine one phone people. bill. Yeah, mm. and the and the, oh, and the responsibilities were shared. You know, who's going to cook? Who's right. going to take out the right. trash? Who's going to rake the leaves, shovel the snow, cut the grass? So you know, organized. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and my neighbor came over to me one day. He said, how many of y'all living over there? You know, with attitude. And I said, it's 17. <laughs> Good God Almighty. It's 17. And y'all got a mortgage? You know, they well, actually, he thought we were renting. So oh. the, the original conversation was, and you rent? And how, how much is your rent? You know, I told him some number, but um, and then he said, "Good day." That means y'all are paying like less than a hundred dollars a piece to live in there. So yeah, it kind of works out like that. Man, that's crazy. And uh, you know, y'all y'all can't like spread out and get you another piece, bro. I said, "Well, what?" I, I have a question. What's crazy? Is it crazy that you're living with you by yourself in your house and you mad at us, or is it crazy that we decided to use our collective resources? Right. And live communally, right. where now I could have a fifty, sixty thousand a year, dollar a year job, and I don't have to spend it all on a mortgage in Prince George's County, and that could be crazy. You know, Business. I can put that money into something else that's businesses, you know, right. more real estate. Mm-hmm. And you can buy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Trips the, around the world. Yeah. That goes back to the individualistic mindset. Yeah. That yes. She's talking about yeah. because it's like. You're, tr- you're trying to talk to people like let's do this together and you see the hesitancy you know right. I don't really want to do that right you know, oh I, I can't live with I, I can't yeah, live with people yeah mm-hmm. yeah so you see the head because it's sort of like I want to say I have my own yeah type of thing but you, you can't say you have your own because you're going to be saving and you can put that money towards other things that's right and we're not willing to make a sacrifice and I think what we don't realize is that it's it's it doesn't have to be a long-term scenario mm-hmm. you could do this short term in order to you know make a sacrifice short term or something like what you was just suggesting and then look at like what the the mexican the um hispanics do when they come 13 in the house and they don't live like that forever i watched them do it in my neighborhood mm-hmm. and then you next to you know it two three four years later um, one of them got their own business cross yep, town. Restaurant or something. Yep. Or another a one just bought a four unit apartment building and living <laughs> in one. You right. know what I'm saying? So it's a short term yeah. sacrifice for a long term benefit. And, and, and then the word sacrifice, we have to even qualify it. Because is it a sacrifice? Hmm. Is it, you know, is it a sacrifice to live that close to your family? Right. You know, when you got somebody that's going to babysit your child, somebody when you're not feeling well is going to do the work that you might have to do, somebody who's going to, you know, you go through the list mm-hmm. right. of all of the things that can now get done because you've got a support system around. You have a community in your house. Good point. So it's, it's not as much of a sacrifice mm. as it is a strategy for wealth building okay. and, and for community support. You know, okay. so that if you were to lose your job, you can imagine if 17 people live in a house exactly. and one person loses their job, well, they're not wondering, where am I going to live? Where am I, what am I going to eat? How long is yeah, this going to exactly. last? Stressed you know? out. Mm-mm. Exactly. Nah. Right. Sick. Because they, they, they take responsibility. Over money. Right. They take responsibilities off of somebody else. All right, look, I'm going to cut the grass. I'm, I'm raking the leaves and shoveling. This. You ain't mm-hmm. got to worry about exactly. that no more because I'm going to be at home. But uh, well, after I get back to a job, then we can now spread this around. And imagine if you were 17 people and now the money is so big that you have your your uh, a family business. That's right. So now you ain't worried about getting fired or nowhere. Right. If you or if you do, well I can go and work for the family business. That's right. There's such so many benefits. And I'm gonna mention this and then we're gonna jump back into um our promos. But I remember this quick short story. Um one time I was going to visit this sister um a couple years ago for whatever reason. It was the first time I was there. She was in a Uh, high-rise apartment complex and I went to her place and I hit the (laughs) I hit the um, elevator button and when the elevator button pops open there were like 20 Korean people in there right and then I happen to look around in the lobby I'm looking around I'm like oh my god ain't nobody here but Korean in the parking lot Koreans coming and going I said, oh, this is where they all live. So the people who do your nails and things of that nature, you don't see them in your next-door neighbor. 
You don't see them shopping a lot of times in the same grocery stores you do. You don't, you know, your children don't play with theirs in public school. Where are these people? They all congregate. I swear it was maybe a, like 200 buildings in, you know, units in this building. And they all do. I saw was Korean people. They do. I had a scene. So they do was, communal yes. living as well. I had a scene that was Asian, and we were there getting some stuff made, just uh, African lady and myself. And the, I'm, I'm hearing their conversation. So she's telling the African lady about where, the house that she lives in. And, um, the lady said, oh, that's an expensive, I think it was somewhere in Montgomery County. Yeah. And she's like, oh, you have money. And she told her, no. Mm. My dad, he was here, and he worked and worked. till He worked himself into the ground, but it's just her and her brother. Mm. And she said, he bought the both of us our first houses. Mm. Cash. <sighs> See there? Cash. Look at there. So she didn't have to worry about a mortgage. Look at there. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. So she was saying for her child, she's trying to, you know, make sure that she set them up as well. With right. Their, yeah. Right. So they do it. That communal living is a real thing. And their kids are getting educated in the best, in the quote unquote best schools and stuff. Mm -hmm. And the proof is in the pudding yes, family. Look around. We, we still on poverty. We, we in the lowest of the low and everybody else has surpassed us. Well, what are they doing? How are they doing that? And that's what we're digging into today. All right, well, we're going to get started on, um, just want to share with you guys, speaking of supporting our own, um, everything I'm going to mention to you today is doing just that. So we do events here at Everlasting Life, and one of the events we do is uh, the Black Wall Street Renaissance. So each and every first Saturday of the month, you can come right here to Everlasting Life, and you can enjoy a full day of shopping from 12 to 6 p.m. We take the dining area, area, we fill it with small business owners, which, um, and then they're selling their goods and their wares and their services. So you can come on out and support them for that. This Saturday, and we always have a different theme every month. So this first Saturday, we're gonna have um, our special guest, our chef. He deals in crystal making. I mean, I'm sorry, jewelry making with crystals. So he's gonna do two presentations with us and share with us um, you know, the healing qualities and benefits of wearing crystal quartz, um, stones and things of that nature. So good, one good, is good that, brother. yeah, mm -hmm. our chef is good, very knowledgeable. Mm -hmm. So 2 p.m. and 4 p.m. are going to be both of those um, workshops. So come on out. It's always free. And that's for every, that's the first Saturday, December the 7th, right here at Everlasting Life. We're at 9185 Central Avenue. Um, and that's in Capitol Heights, Maryland. So the next program we have is coming up, actually, this Sunday. Uh, we have two dynamic speakers going to be in the house. Um, the first speaker is the irritated, our very own, the irritated Jenny. He's going to be doing a powerful lecture on Where is Your Black God, part two. So he's done this lecture before. Oh, okay. This is going to be part two. Where is your black God? Now, this has gotten so much. The, 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 if you know the irritated genie at all, he is a controversial figure <laughs> on purpose. And so everything he does is controversial. So people be coming up to me, what does that mean? Where's your black God? I'd be like, him. You go see him. So come on out. Hear what he has to say. Very powerful. His lectures are always informative, very interesting. I'm always on the edge of my seat. Um, then right after his lecture that starts at 2 p.m., um, follows Dr. Layla Africa. Oh, my goodness. If you guys are not familiar with Dr. Layla Africa, please Google him. This is the brother who taught me about the power of melanin and all that entails. I got that information from Dr. Layla Africa, but he is so brilliant. He's going to be right here with us in the house. His lecture starts at... Um, 5 p.m. Doors open at 4. So if you come at 2, Irritated Genie's lecture is free. Then you can have yourself a seat, but the Dr. Layla Africa is $20 or $25 at the door. $20 in advance, $25 at the door. But if you come for both, you'll already have a good seat. It's going to be a packed house. I'm telling you guys, it's going to be a packed house. That's this Sunday, September the 24th, right here at Everlasting Life. So wait, Irritated Genie's at 2 Irritated genie's at two. Uh, but he's free. His is free. So what about the people that come to his and it just stays to listen? Yeah, they they gotta gotta, okay, that, you, I just yeah. want to make that clear. Yeah, you just got to come right up okay. to the front to pay to, <laughs> okay. in order to stay. So, right. yeah, it's an easy process for sure. <laughs> Thank you for that question. Good question. Um, next we have actually this Friday. I kind of went out of step a little bit. 
But um, oh, we'll do the dinner in the movie. Hang it there. That's fine. So I mean, this well, normally each and every Friday we do a dinner in a movie night right here at Everlasting Life, where you come and you grab yourself something to eat or something to drink or a snack, or we have popcorn, we have cakes, we have uh, all kind of goodies and stuff, uh, cookies and things. If you're not really really hungry. 7 p.m. every Friday from 7 to 9, we do a dinner and a movie. You come, you air, we air a documentary, and then we do a discussion that follows right after. Very informative discussion. Um, but this Friday, um, yeah, but this Friday, we're not doing the dinner and a movie because there is a special program going on. It's a love supreme, a tribute to John Coltrane. They do it every year. So that's going on. So we're skipping the dinner and the movie. This is a bye week because uh, the tribute is this Friday from 7 p.m. This here is $20 in advance, $25 at the door, right here at Everlasting Life. Come on out. If, you, if you're looking for a real good time, somewhere, you know, you may be a date night, you want to bring your parents, or you just want to come and hang out with some people that, you know, fun and loving people, this is the place to be. It's a very, very, very quality quality good event i've been um last year it's always a packed house but i have a really good time good music live music different performances that's this friday okay deja vu now dr baruch here has three locations one other location is evolve restaurant then he has vigoritos but at Evolve Restaurant and Lounge, which is located at 341 Cedar Street in Northwest in the Tacoma Park section of your Washington, D.C., he does each and every Thursday a Deja Vu Thursday at um, Evolve where you can go from 5 to 9 and get buy one, get one free real cocktails. So go see them for that for sure. Same great tasting food as right here at Everlasting Life. And usually Dr. Baru is hanging, Baruch, excuse me, is hanging out there. So if you want to go and chit chat with him and bug him half to death, he doesn't mind. No, you no. know, <laughs> you can usually catch him there um, for these deja vu Thursdays. Okay, that is what we have in store for you guys coming up here at Everlasting Life. Back into the conversation at hand. What is the family saying? All right, let's get to the family. Someone loves Brother Jeannie. <laughs> she went to one of his events, so shout out to Jeannie. That tall brother. Well, I see that. That's, that's, she's talking about that tall thank, brother. Thanks for, thanks for calling in or chiming in Jeannie's mom. I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Jeannie's mom. Thanks, mom. Jeannie's mom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, someone says, uh, Ashenia. Johnson, she said, I buy black to help support and sustain black business owners. The more businesses they do, the more buying power they have and will eventually be able to lower their prices to better compete in the market. Yeah. The marketplace. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's my that's definitely my personal story. Mm -hmm. You know, my goals is the um one of my goals is to um We'll open up a business. I won't say just yet, but opening up a business very soon. And I'm in. I'm, I will be needing employees. Mm -hmm. And so, and thanks to the family, I couldn't do it without you know the support of the community, right. uh, sewing back into my business. So you know, it's a definitely you know hand in hand, and I appreciate that too. Someone was talking about um, uh, uh, D. Sorrell said that white people in D.C. are doing what Dr. Baruch was talking about, communal living. Mm. She said they call it uh, co-op. Mm. Good um, point. So you're seeing a lot of that as well. Good point. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so this, this person here, that, that damn data, said <laughs> shopping black isn't a big problem. We support black-owned businesses to some extent. A lot of black business owners don't get together and help other blacks. They buy European cars and clothes and look down on the poor at that point. It's deeper than buying black, in my opinion. That's a good, let's just dig in that a little bit. I'm glad they brought that point up because that's goes, that was one of my questions. Um, should all black owned businesses be supported? And I think you kind of touched on that yeah. su subject early on. Um, who would qualify? Because we, I hear people say again, you know, well, you know, I, that there's a bad, reputation out there that we have of um service customer service. customer service our customer service is not 
up to par. So let's talk about that. I mean, what do y'all think about that? Should we support black-owned businesses even though the customer service is poor? Um, well, guaranteed the customer service is not going to get better if we don't, one, communicate with the owner mm -hmm. and communicate with whoever it is that has the authority over the, you know, the person or people who are not providing the best service. Mm -hmm. So you, you have to engage it. You know, it's kind of like if, if we didn't go to the bad school because we wanted to go, we wanted to send our children to the good school and the bad school never got our human resources, it never got our financial resources, it never got our intellectual resources, then it's not going to get better. You know, it'll just grind itself down. Eventually, it'll close. Yeah. And that's what we see happening in our community. So we have to, you know, take a responsibility. As, as you know, I was in corporate America. I was making a ton of money, a ton of money. I could have done all right. I would have been all right. I wouldn't have been looking at none of y'all. I'd have been living someplace with a bunch of people that don't look like y'all or mm -hmm. whatever. You know, if I, if I stayed on that path of, okay, having this much money and living that kind of life, I would have been further and further away from people of conscience consciousness and as, as well as people of color yeah. but I said no well that ain't the train I want to go on you know I need to get on another train so let me jump let me take as much out of this one so I did a hijack so I did a hijack move I took as much out of that train as I mm. could brought it over to this train so that then we could get this going because otherwise mm. it wasn't going to happen I was very comfortable going out to Virginia to get my food because I knew I couldn't get healthy food in my community right. I was comfortable until the point where I ran into that brick wall well, I heard the white woman say at a podium, she was practicing her speech. She said, if you control a man's food, you control him. And I was like, wow, look at that. You know, I'm being controlled, and I don't even know it. And it's control on several levels. You control his resources. You control what sustains him, what empowers him, what right. gives him life. You know, you control so much. And uh, I had to get off of that. So, you know, I, I think it's, it's important for us to recognize our collective responsibility. Yeah. If my restaurant is not doing something right, and I'll tell y'all in a minute, if it's a line out there at the restaurant, you know, yeah, it might be a little stretch for me to ask y'all to come and help us behind the line. But pick up the phone, call <laughs> me, because I might know something that I could get, make happen. Right. I came in the restaurant today. The line was to the door. And there are people on the phone, there are people doing whatever they do and didn't know they were oblivious. And it was just one person up there supporting what was going on. I said, oh, no. You know, and the customers wanted to know why I didn't jump on the register. I said, well, that's because if I brought five people up to the front to help y'all, it would have been better than me standing at the register, you know, ringing them up as he went through each person one at a time. But so communicating with the owner, having access to the owner is important. Mm -hmm. And having an owner that's going to be responsive. If every time you come to a business, you say, hey, man, you know, uh, I, I wish you all would stop, you know, doing whatever. Whatever it is that they have an issue with, it's legitimate. Mm -hmm. And if every time the, you know, the owner's like, I ain't doing nothing, you know, thank you, I'll take your money, and you can, you know, come back again. We ain't, we ain't doing what you asked us to do. Then you're going to lose your customer base. So mm -hmm. we have to be responsive to the customer base. The customer base has to be, uh, they have to understand the process. You, you don't turn this ship overnight. Mm -hmm. You know, we're not about to just all of a sudden, you know, correct everything that's wrong, but through a process and, and having a collective community effort to say, okay, there, it might be a community board or, you know, some type of uh, board of advisors that you get right. where people are saying, okay, yeah, I, I would want you, you know, to do things differently. Well, and I we have the resources, people make the resources available for us to get there. I feel like there's also some personal responsibility here as well mm -hmm. um, because it's, it's very interesting where they go to one black, someone goes to one black owned business and gets poor customer service and all of a sudden they're not supporting any more black owned businesses. But we would jump from biz, uh, uh, agency to agency that's run by white people and work for them. You get fired over here, you find another white person Ooh, to work for. Teach. You leave over here, you go, you find another white person. You you don't hear what you mm. say, Those, this particular agency spoiled it for all other white people. Mm. We go from job to job to job. So why is it that when it comes to our people, we get one bad experience and we just write each other off. Yeah. Like, what is that? Yeah. So I think there's some personal responsibility there as well. Because right. when you talk to people, when you say, oh, uh, black businesses have uh, poor customer service, you find out they've been to one store. Yeah. Right. One. Yeah. One black it gave up business. on the whole and, black community. But we don't do that when we're working for other people. And we don't do that when we're shopping with other people either. Thank you. Yeah, because if you, you don't like that Chinese restaurant, mm -hmm. you're going to go to the one around the corner. Thank you. Or you know, or you, you, or you may even just go back to that one. We you have know? A, we have a very low tolerance for our community. Yep. You know, we have a low tolerance for one another, mm -hmm. and w that plays out in our relationships. That plays mm -hmm. out in how we, you know, engage in commerce. 
you know, on, on many levels it, it plays out. And, and we have to develop a higher level of tolerance for our community and, and for our businesses. But I, I'm going to tell you, as a business owner, man, let me go to somebody's restaurant and see something that ain't right. I'm going to go, hey, Slim, you know what? Right. You, you might want to you might want to do this because they were just talking about that outside. I swept it up, but right. it looks like it might be coming back in me a minute. Me too. You know, I'm, I'm quick to, you know, let me help you out. Right. You know, let me help you, uh, you know, look better. Because if you look right. better, I'm obviously supporting you. I like what you're doing. I want you to be here. Right. Yeah. Right. Yes. Me too. And I think that's what we did. And it's a way, you know, I think, uh, you know, co co Effective communication is an art form. You know, there's a way to say it. You don't go in there, you know, y'all trifling, y'all need to do this and da 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 da. So, you know, if you communicate it on a on a um, you know, on a level where they can easily receive it, you never know what where, where your complaints I also can go. See where a lot of a lot of us, we really internalize a lot of negative things about ourselves. Yes, and we that's do. how we approach each other. So you know how uh, when people say when they go into the workplace or they go to college, their parents say, you know, because you're black, you have to do double right? the work. It's almost like we hold people to this way high standard because they're black. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then we could take mediocre from somebody else who is not black. And we got to change that way of thinking. Yeah. If this is going to work. Okay. Well, when we when we buy black, something else happens that we we uh, contribute to. Mm -hmm. We contribute to helping somebody in our community get stronger, yes. right. and that unfortunately for the mindset of the narrow mindset of the crabs in a barrel folk <laughs> is not a good thing. Yeah. Yeah. The last thing I want is for you to be doing better. Yeah, that's a good point. And Gina, you had something you wanted to share. Yeah, we someone in the point. <laughs> okay, we have a caller. Call, are you there? Hello, call, are you on the line? Can you hear us? Okay, so as y'all know, we was having some difficulty early on. So mm -hmm. if you guys want to call back, the number studio hotline number is 240-455-5934. Um, that's the studio hotline number. Call if you want to call us back. I'm not sure what happened with that call. Irritated Jenny is here with us in the studio. Did you want to have something you wanted to share? Yeah, I just want to say real briefly, um, <clears throat> a lot of the problems is people don't like giving money to people that they hate. And we have a lot of self-hatred. Yes. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't take a whole lot for us to turn away from paying up because it really is not about it's a little bit about the service, but it's more about how we feel about our own people. Because mm -hmm. like you said, if we really feel good about ourselves, yeah. if one person didn't do right, we just go to the next black business. But we throw it away because it's not really throwing the businesses away. We throwing each other away. Mm. I mean, that's my, that's my. Good point. Good point. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, how does real estate, we talked to on that a little bit about the land, but um, affect this conversation? So, you know, as far as like gentrification, we get, I think we get frustrated a lot. Oh, they come in and they gentrify and that, that, that community. Well, well, what, what happened to the point where they were even able to do that? You know? Uh, I think this is, uh, this is a systemic, systemic issue in the sense that if, if I look at Southeast Washington, D.C., and remember back in the 60s and the 70s, we were a strong community. There were two-parent homes. You know, yeah, there was, there was Slim on the corner that was doing heroin, but he was like the only guy. And, you know, it was our communities were clean. When we saw one another, when I saw another black person, I knew I, there, was, there was safety. You know, when I saw somebody who wasn't black, I was concerned. Mm -hmm. You know, I was like, well, let me get to some black folk. Yeah. But somehow or another, with the infiltration of this uh, crack cocaine and the, and the deluge of drugs in our community and then crime and violence associated with then taking away jobs and then making people mm -hmm. say, well, this is the only thing I got, you know, to go out here and make this money this way. Because now I got a record or I didn't finish school. I didn't do well in school. You know, I didn't go on beyond, you know, high school. Not that I'm saying that you need to or should. But um, you got all of these delimiters, all of these things that are preventing us from being able to elevate to the level that our parents were at. And that pressure is on us. We don't want the same grind that our parents are on. 
but we didn't we didn't you know put any thought to our parents didn't put any thought in any thought into how we were going to then take this ball and keep running mm-hmm. and as a result of that this crack cocaine and marijuana and the drugs and the violence and the guns came in and totally decimated the unity that once existed in our community and as it decimated the unity we we found that we were unable to support financially support ourselves now you add that to the fact that of course we're not being hired as much as other people so we're, we're not we're having access less access to jobs and when I talk about systemic now they're qualifying you by saying okay you can't get this job because you have a low credit score mm-hmm. well now that's that's enslaving an individual you're saying okay mm-hmm. you're never going to be able to elevate beyond this point and the only way you could ever elevate beyond this point is if you have money or resources right. so you're never going to be we're going to keep you right where you are or a felony it's a trap. Yeah. right and then keep you from jobs for having a felony when you know what three out of five Men have been in the jail, black men have been in jail or something to that effect. Right. Yes. And and you add all of those dynamics together and on on top of that you you look at the uh the pressure that's being put on our community you know where, where we don't have the same amount of access to government or community resources made available by the government you know you saw the firemen say the other day you know i would rather save a dog than a million black people mm-hmm. well when you have your first responders are in that state of mind we're watching what's going on and then let's let's jump over to health for a minute we're watching the health of our community deteriorate and when you get sick and you're on your dying bed you will spend your last dime to mm. to stay alive in a vegetative state you know you you ain't going to ever do nothing again but let's spend mama's last dime to keep her and and that's what's happening our money is going out the window so fast mm-hmm. and uh we don't have a we don't have the right value uh uh for life and for what is around us, uh, the, the abundance of wealth that is around us. And as a result of that, we find ourselves, you know, broke and yeah. poor when we're really rich. We're so rich, yeah. Yeah. but we're, we're, we're poor and we're broke. We have one another. It shouldn't be a situation. If, if any of the four of us have a crisis, it should not be a situation where we should go through it alone. Right. You should be, we, we, we should be intelligent enough to know, okay, if you're going to move into my house, there's going to be some things that you're going to have to do a little differently. One, you ain't running the house. Jeannie, you know what I'm saying? I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just saying. You know, when you move in, it's gonna be no. You no. You stay. You stay. That, that's your room, and keep all your stuff in that room, yeah. Jeannie. You know. But I'm just saying. You know. So, but yeah, 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 yeah. But until you get a job, anyway. No, but so it's you know. But when we when we do that, man, we then we feel protected. So if Jeannie yeah. goes out there running his mouth because you know he'll do it, right? Yeah. He at least knows he has a net that will catch him. Yeah. But if he says something crazy, like he, he lost his job, you know, right. and, and he, if he right. didn't have a net to catch him, Petite. he would have to say, oh, okay, well, let me bite my tongue because mm. uh, obviously I don't need to uh, keep talking that way because I ain't going to be able to eat, you um, know. I'm watching, I'm watching time, right, because so, I know we're going to be back yeah. um, But he was talking about buying power, and they said it's, proje- uh, it's projected um, t- by 2019 that black people should have uh, 1.4 trillion in buying power. Mm. 1.4 trillion. That right? like the 11th richest country in the world. Mm-hmm. If we put all our money together, mm-hmm. we would. So if it was the top 20 mm-hmm. list of all the wealthy nations in the world, we would be on no, at number 11. And the and the and the other thing that I wanted to uh, mention, uh, two things. Uh, Jean, uh, not Jeannie, Dr. Baruch. Uh, talked about communalism and the thing that came to my mind is how fast we try to push our kids out of the home mm. as well that also um, is a problem in mm. our community you know what I mean yeah um, so we, we need to kind of like rethink that mm. our kids are leaving home at like 20 right you know 19 to me you're still a teenager 20 right, right? Um, but talking going forward just for people who may be thinking where do I where do I go next yeah and what do I do next because I want to start supporting black businesses and as we spoke about earlier you can start small yeah. so we have places like we black black dot com where right. they just post a, a lot of um black owned they sell businesses all kind of the world's right. largest um um, online database exactly. for black owned businesses. Black owned business. So that's webuyblack.com and then there's black owned businesses.me that you can go on and yeah. it'll give you a list of online black businesses so you can 
Bla uh, buy black from the convenience of your home. Right. Mm -hmm. And then we have the apps where if you're in your community, it, there's an app called Where You, that's W-H-E-R-E-U, that you can download. And there's another app called Around the Way that you can download to your phone. And they'll be, they'll be able to assist you with black-owned businesses that's in your area. Right. So that's a start mm -hmm. for those that, you know, want to, but they don't really know where to start. Right. You know, and the other thing I like to say is, um, you know, I always go back to... <laughs> To this and I know this is just my years of being a Christian. Um, there's, I always go back to where Moses goes to the Red Sea, right? And he goes to part the Red Sea, right? And he did, he's like, So, what do I do? And the question that was asked to him is, What is in your hand? And I always come back to that because mm. we, we are full of talent, Very. right? And we're full of wealth. And, you know, we need to find what our hands can do, right? you know, and bring that money into the community. A lot of us, you see people that have the talents and they just don't understand. This is why we have to connect with each other. Right. If you see something, I don't care how young they are, 14. We had a sister came for Jeannie, them event that came and spoke very eloquently, very articulate. You know, she she can then bring other young people in. Our young people are filled with talent, right. but we are pimping them off to these other people for their skills in basketball, baseball, in sports, art, music, right. you know? So we have to look at that and we have to form a community around these kids and employ them. That's right. You know, like, like Dr. Baruch, you know, he the man. Right. Because when you can employ your own kids, you're saying something. That's right. <laughs> so, that's right. yeah, that's a, that's a big deal. We have to be able to employ our own children as well as educate them. I agree. Yeah. Yeah, that's good teaching. Thank you for that, honey. For... Well, family, that is our Empower Hour. So I hope you guys gained something. If you have gained something, we implore you to share this information with others. Again, we cannot stress enough that there are people out there that need this information. So don't hoard it. Don't keep it to yourself. If you've learned something or you've got even one little tidbit mm -hmm. out of it, you never know who's sitting in, at, somewhere struggling and just don't have the thought in mind to, do, to be able to do anything different because they don't have the information. Knowledge is power. So collectively, with all of us together, we can change our dynamics. I sincerely believe that with all my heart and soul. So share the information, and we will be back with you next week, same time, same location. Peace and love. Yeah. Yeah, we can hold on to it. All right, family. Thank you.